Penguin. Go to IMPILMS.org and check the homepage update. Then log in. You do not have any username or password. Or course and Okay, uh, Donna, I think we lost the volume. Okay. Uh, we lost the volume. Well, okay. it's, it's just at the very end, but that's okay. Okay. Can go back to the homepage. Um, and then one other thing is, okay, can you can you um, expand the, the page? It looks like I can see the webinar roster sticking out there. Yeah, we can, we can yeah, close that up. There we go. That's perfect. Okay. okay. So. So, the, um, so that animation is a great little um, tool that you can use if you have a, a you know, like especially now, the, your, your apprentices, um, anybody who's working from home or remotely, um, that's a great little introduction. It's right there on the home page. You can see it under home at the bottom. It was just a click there. And next to that is, well, <laughs> that's another orientation. It's actually, it's a video of me speaking, but we don't have to play that. Um, so you can see that later. <laughs> Um, so as Donna said, the URL is the ifpilms.org. Um, if you bookmark that, it'll make it super easy for you to find it. It is a public page, so anyone who may stumble upon this page, um, there's nothing proprietary on this page. So um, it actually might be something that might entice someone to look a little bit further into our trade. Um, so that's the, the first thing I would suggest, especially since um, I think a lot of people might be encouraging people to do coursework from home is Donna, if you can scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page is just to suggest that they do the system test um, because that test will tell them if there are any issues with their computer like maybe their pop-up blockers are on um, and they need to you know turn those off so that things can can run properly um, I would highly recommend that they run that system test first and then it'll give them a list of things. You see the check marks and anything that they might need to address will be described there and they can move on from there. So that, that would probably be my, our first suggestion uh, for getting people online from a remote um, access. Okay. <clears throat> so back to the, the main page of the LMS. Um, at the very top of the page, you'll see the alert. And we've created that as a ticker so that it's, um, it kind of catches your eye. It's up to the date, up to date, up to the minute sometimes. Um, information, if there um, is a reported error or something that we want to communicate, um, you'll see some of the topics as escalated issues. Um, that way you can check these pages before you call or email us. Oh, okay, well, this has already been reported. Um, you know, we, we do want to hear from you if you're still having an issue. So those emails could be sent to the FPI International, but you'll see a list of things that we are already aware of and we'll keep that up to date and, and finish those off as, as those problems are addressed. Um, so then so there's kind of a new layout to the homepage if you haven't seen it before. So there's like this sliding side on, on the side, there's a, a slider that has a couple of different links on it, and then there's four blocks um, that you can click on from there. So if we, I guess we can start, Donna, with the, um, the let's just start from the beginning, the 2020 IFTI training calendar. So the training calendar has two options for viewing. Um, you can either look at it in the calendar format, uh, so if you click on the calendar format, it will show you month by month um, what courses are being offered at the FCI. Of course, somewhat of a mute point right now, but um, in the future when we are able to get back up and running, you'll be able to click there, go in, read the class, what it's about. And then if you're a DOT, you would use the DOT request training registration form, and that would allow you to enter in the participant name, their member ID, their email address, what class they're interested on, and which date in and which date they're interested in coming. And when you hit submit, that that 
form goes to the FTI international email and is picked up by someone on the curriculum team who will process that email and then and, and get back to you um, with your confirmation. And the other yes. way, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. So aside from the DOT request form, there's an instructor training form, which may look similar, but once it's received by the mailbox and a DOT is not at, or it's not from DOT, it would be forwarded to the DOT and we'll ask for approval before registering the, the instructor or coordinator. Then Alice showed you the calendar for format. Uh, some DOTs or ATRs, they just want a quick view of what's available for, for the entire year or they want to print the calendar. So we have uh, this version of the calendar. It's uh, a Google a worksheet and you can print it. And if anybody's interested from your district council, then you can just register them through the forms or send an email to the FTI International mailbox and it will be processed. It, it's usually processed by Mo, uh, one of our um, curriculum specialist support. Right, and one other feature of that calendar format is when you're in there, when you click on the calendar itself and go into the course, so then you double click on a course name. Um, and from there, you'll see at the bottom, there's a, you can link it to your Google Calendar or, or, or another calendar, you can export it. So it would be already on your own personal calendar um, as a reminder. So that's just a quick and easy way to, to remind yourself that you've signed up for training or you've been signed up for training. Yeah. Or you, or you uh, find uh, someone else. Yeah, go ahead, Al. Go ahead. Nope, I'm done. Yeah, so most of the format of the page, they would show the trainings available for the month. So you might see that in different pages of the LMS. So if we go back, uh, aside from the calendar, we have a link to um, send an email to IFTI. So basic requirements, we just need um, the person's information, member ID, district council. So if we need to ask for more information, we can just re reply back to the request. Then we have here the top questions that are going to the mailbox. If it's not that, it's just select other, then type in. We would appreciate if you can describe the issue or if there's an error message available, copy and paste that error. Then if you have if you're uh, an admin and uploading a file, you can attach the file or the .txt here, or if it's a screenshot of the error, then there's also a way to submit it. So Alice showed you that from the alerts, we have escalated issues. Most of the issues are sent through the mailbox. And if we see a spike, let's say uh, it's happening for multiple um, users of the LMS, then we, we do some further testing and determine if it's a system issue. Right, and so, always try to be as specific as possible when you're reporting any kind of error or error message. Aside from the link to send an email, we have the videos. Um, so these are the top videos either requested uh, to, uh, to from the IFTI or some videos that are part of the uh, courses that um, were requested by district council to be available. So right now we have the convention speech. Um, then there was a question about changes in the LMS. We, uh, back in August of 2019, we um, redesigned the LMS. So we sent out a short video about that. Then we also launched um, early that year, the OJL. So there are questions of how, how do I do it if I'm, a member how do I do so there's also a, a video about that if you scroll down you see other videos including the LMCI trade specific videos and these are mostly for orientation let's say um, you have um, possible apprentices and you want to show them basic uh, glazing orientation so we have those videos available and they're less than uh, 10 minutes Again, Alice mentioned these, this is a public website. 
um, you can just click videos and start sharing it. Or if let's say you're attending a trade show or a conference and you need a copy, there's a website, it's the IUPAT hub, and from there you can download the videos. So right. and okay, go ahead, Al. I was just going to say, one, just this one little side note is um, with the redesign of this web page, of our home page, um, this screen will adjust to any format, any, any device that you're using. So if you pull it up on your phone, it will, it will um, display properly no matter where you're viewing it, whether it's your laptop or a, a mobile device. So just FYI. Okay, so aside from the videos, uh, we have here the course catalog. So from one catalog, we have uh, multiple catalogs um, serving um, different purposes. The foundation of the LMS and the main catalog is the programs of study. If you click the programs of study, um, it's more than 300 pages and it, it has everything, uh, what's available in the LMS. and um, We'll just give you an overview of the contents of the programs of study. So I'll scroll down. I think it's page 605. And this, this page talks about um, abbreviations and course numbering that we use in, in the LMS. So every trade has a specific abbreviation, and they, there's a unique number assigned to it. Let's say you're a coordinator or instructor for floor, so it would be an SLR, and everything would be 4,000, starting with four. And if you're looking for a health and safety um, leadership or an introduction to the union courses, that would be a COR, and we were using 1,000, but uh, it's the biggest curriculum that we have. Now we're back to three digits. Then from these course numberings, we started. Um, working with district councils and we understood that there were different needs um, based on the reason or even the state. So we created um, customized uh, abbreviations or course codes. Let's say CAN would be for Canada. Then FTI, FTI are all the courses assigned to you uh, when you attend a uh, course in, in Hanover. So these are created for COE purposes, for, uh, for tracking purposes, uh, especially for completion. Then we also offer through the COE program or related to the COE program, the degree um, course code. And some of the courses are translated in Spanish. So you might see an SPN course code. Um, and the last one is a C with a district council number. So you might see there a C67, C61, C35, and that means that a course code was created specifically for that district council. Either it, there was a difference in the description or the hours that they offer at their district council. So that's possible. If you browse through the programs of study and cannot find a fit for the class you offer at your district council, you can send us a request, we'll show you how to do it, and um, we can create a course code for you. So this would be a sample of uh, a course code and a course name. So it would have a unique number plus the abbreviation and the, the keywords. So any, any part of this course code and course name is a searchable keyword in the LMS. So you can search either by number, but most of us are not really good with numbers. So uh, keywords would be a good way to find the unique keyword within the course name and type that. And we'll look at it at the course catalog once we're logged in the LMS. Right, so then the next, I'm sorry, go ahead. So the contact hours are, um, are contact hours that were decided upon based on um, uh, the committee meetings and um, the, all of the up to the all of the trade committee meetings and um, and our national standards as well. So uh, the contact hours in the system will be this, the recommended um, minimum number of hours for that particular competency or topic in in the catalog. Um, so along with those course codes, you might see 
um, some special acronyms at the end or characters at the end of the course code. So for example, um, any course code that ends with the letter A is going to be an assessment. So the assessments are going to be found in a course by themselves so that they're not part of the student's profile. Um, the C, which I think everybody is probably pretty familiar with, the C is the certification. So that is a third party certification um, that would be uploaded. It can be uploaded. The choice would be to either, you know, upload the completion as a certification and also you can um, upload a file that contains um, the actual physical certificate that can be displayed on the app. So any course code that that ends in a C and is uploaded to the third party um, certificate upload will be displayed on the app. Um, the individual course um, district councils can have a C, can, you know, they can have a certification. So here, for example, is C57, so that's district council 57 and their course code, and they have a certification. So that there might be a difference in hours spent um, or even in provider, educational provider that might present that particular type, that particular curriculum. So sometimes that's why somebody might request a new course code. Um, the I in the acronym um, in the course code is for instructor access. So we've divided the instructor and the student access in many parts of the curriculum so that um, the instructor can really use the LMS as a repository for their uh, for their training documents. So, um, if if they're teaching a a, a, glass, a glass cleaning lesson or something like that, then they can upload any documents they want. They might have quizzes and tests, um, answer sheets, and things like that in the instructor notes or in, in the instructor course code that the student should not get. So then the student that ends in an F would only have probably you know, maybe a couple of documents and access to the um, online curriculum or a PowerPoint or, or a PDF document that's supplemental. Um, and then finally, the last one is an asterisk, a red asterisk. So any course that, that has an asterisk at the end of it um, denotes that it's a third party course. Um, they're not contained within the courses anymore. They're all separate. And um, and that will typically be a, a, a cost at cost course for the member to take. Um, and we'll show you that list um, where, where to find the list of what the courses are that are going to have a fee and um, how much they are. And it's actually there's a link here in the in the program to study, and then there's another link on the main homepage as well. And I think it's also on the ticker. Okay, <clears throat> so there's a course listing for each of the um, programs. So in the core course, you'll be able to scroll through and see all of the listings, the course name, the title, um, the recommended number of hours, the OJ hours that are recommended as well. Um, so this is kind of your lifeline. What you see in here is what you're gonna see in the LMS um, and studying and looking through this uh, program of study is a great way for you to just familiarize yourself with what things look like. So as Donna was saying, any of these pieces of, of the course code and course name are searchable items. Um, so being familiar with those is a great way to be able to um, get onto the LMS and, and be able to find those course codes when you're looking for them. <clears throat> Yeah, so I, as I scroll down the programs of study, it, it's giving us the competencies for a curriculum. Then if you go, let me just go to the part where they have the description. So here we have a description for every course code. So, and we have the estimated hours. So these are the same descriptions that you will see in the LMS. And in the LMS, we have more links and added um, description per course. So these are the short descriptions for course roads. Right, so you can use the program of study, um, it's by trade. So it's 300 and some pages long, but if you look at the table of contents in, and you're a paint instructor, 
then just go to the table of contents, find out what page it's on, and it'll give you all of the same information. Um, it's all laid out the same way for each trade. So um, you'll be able to see all the course listings, the competencies, um, and then um, and then the suggested program of study for that particular trade. Okay. Okay, so aside from the four main boxes on the LMS homepage, we have the slider. So the slider, the first thing you see on the slider is a way for you to log in so that you can just click on that and it gives you the same login page from from the one at the bottom. Or it, it would give you some of the topics related to COE. So it talks about COE and uh, the instructor program here in uh, Hanover. So Al, do you want to talk about the COE instructor program plus the master instructor program? Yeah, so um, so the COE um, programs have a pathway for the associate instructor as well as the master instructor, excuse me, instructor program. Um, and so when an when a instructor or new instructor comes to the FTI, um, and they take the, the two teaching technique classes, um, then they really only need two more classes, a health and safety class and one elective to, to kind of fall under that umbrella of, um, of the of, of associate instructor. Um, but the real goal here is to move everybody into that master instructor pathway, um, which is a 10 class requirement four of which have already will have already been taken care of through that associate pathway. Um, and then they'll they'll add on the additional classes. Plus they end with a master instructor capstone project, um, which we we've had just a few people going through. We'd like to get a lot more of, of people coming through that program. Um, we can provide um, reports for you. We, we keep track of who's getting close or who needs what classes in order to achieve both that associate and move into that master instructor pathway. So um, if you have questions about that, you can email us at FTI International and we can, we can take a look and see um, where one of your instructors might be in relation to achieving either one of these milestones um, in their instructor pathway. So are there any questions about that, Danny? Do you wanna, should we stop for questions real quick? Okay, I'm gonna unmute everybody, and if you have any questions or if you want to raise your hand, unmuted. Does anybody have any questions about anything so far? Okay. All right. I think we can move on. We can meet them back. Okay, so going back to the LMS homepage, um, aside from the COE information that you have, we mentioned that there is a way for you to log in from the slider. There's also a way for you to log in using the menu bar and from this uh, section of the LMS. So let's log in and on the, lo on the login page, we would ask for a username and that would be the member ID. So a member ID, um, then it would requ uh, require a password. So the password by default is IFTI123. Um, FTI it's lowercase no space. And under the login um, box, you see here, I, for I forgot my password. So this is the top question we're still getting from uh, users of the LMS. So if you forgot your password, just click that link and it would send a uh, reset um, password link to your mailbox. So the only thing is if you don't have an email on file, and that, that is where the problem com comes in. So um, ensure that the member has a, a, an email address. If there's no email address, uh, work with your IMS staff to update the profile. And once that profile is updated the next day, it would um, 
be shown on the LMS. So as an admin, you can reset the password for um, members and um, non-member ID. So we mentioned that there is a non-member ID. So all the IMS staff, if um, let's say you have an apprentice and they're not, they still don't have a member ID, your IMS staff, they were trained to create a non-member ID. So it, it would look uh, similar to the member ID, but uh, in terms of looking at the profile, they would have fewer information on their profile page. So aside from the link on the I forgot my password, um, for new users of the LMS, we um, ask them to read this user agreement. It, it has all the information about the LMS, uh, what are the path parameters of using the system. So once um, you have your username and password, uh, you type that in, then you click um, login. And once you log in, it would go to the My Account page. So this is the default page of the LMS. So when you're looking at this page, it would show your information and your member ID, and it would show you um, your profile. So if you click on profile, this is uh, automatic information coming from the IMS database. So if you're not familiar with IMS, IMS is the IUPAC official database of our records. So all the information in the LMS is automatically transferred from that database every night. So you don't need to type it in the system. It's automatically available. If entered in IMS today, it would be available in the LMS tomorrow. So if they, if you're, if you know their name or member ID, you can just type in the system and you can see their profile. So the profile is basically the information, their email, a way to change their password, and address information, um, district council information, and skills, uh, their trade, and all that information. And just remember that any part of this um, profile page is a searchable demographic information when you go to the report section of the LMS. So again, uh, this information is coming from a database and most of the information is grayed out. You're in, you can't change it, uh, only the password and the time zone can be changed from this page. So aside from the profile page, you have my, the My Transcript. So the My Transcript is everything that you've um, completed in the LMS. So if you're taking, um, let's say, changing the culture of construction, with, which is an online course, or any course, let's say, uh, Survival of the Fittest, it's an online course. So it would show you the completion, um, the course or course name, the estimated hours, then when you completed it, and it, it's tracking per lesson. So it would say if, it, if you passed it, and if there's an assessment linked to that, you wouldn't even see the score. So aside from the online, um, this, this also, the test is also is, um, the record for any uploads done by the IFPI. So if you attended a training here in Hanover, the record is automatically up updated once you click the survey. Then aside from uh, IFPI uploads, there's also uploads coming from the district council. So Alice and I have um, trained most of the district council and there should be one or two um, admins that your district council who should be familiar if not using the upload feature of the LMS. Uh, so it's an import of activity uh, upload, and we'll discuss that further tomorrow once we start um, showing you the admin features. So aside from the My Profile and My Transfer page, uh, we have the main part of the LMS My Account page, and this is where you can see the actual listing of the enrollment. So you would see a listing of all the courses assigned to any account. So this is a user view. So I have most of the courses assigned to my account. So if I need to find the course, so what I do, I just filter it um, to this gray bar on top of the page. So it depends on what I want to search. So if it's alphabetically, so I sort it through that, or do I just want to finish what I already started? So I 
Okay, I already started um, this course, so I, I just want to finish it and I click go. Or I was just looking for something, let's say, the documents, uh, ICI documents folder. So once I see that, I just click on go and it shows me a short description of that folder. And if there are links available, it would give me the links. So this, this is a resource um, folder for DOTs and selected coordinators or um, admins. So this is where we have linked the, the top um, resources requested by the district council. And if you're working with Nicole or some of our IFTI staff, so you might be seeing some of the links here, especially for the CAS information for the off-campus training. So if there's a lesson linked to that, um, it would be under this box. And right now it's saying program alignment. This was launched um, two years ago. And all you need to do is if, uh, if you need to launch an online course, just click on go. So this part of the LMS is managed by uh, your designated admin. So this might show uh, 100 courses or it might show just a single a single course. Let's say you just want them to see changing the culture of construction. So uh, it would only list one course um, and all the users need to do is click go and from there um, view the course. So let's check. Okay, so since I have a lot of courses assigned to me, I just click on shift or, or control F, then it, it pops up a box and I can just click uh, or type in a keyword and it tells me that there are four or four things that are uh, that is found. So let me just see if I'm still enrolled to change in culture concern. So it's uh, showing that I'm assigned to the STI class. So if I click that, I click go. Same format, it, it, it's telling me that I'm enrolled to the class. And there's a way for me to rate it. Let's say I already completed a class. I can say one star if I didn't like, or uh, five stars if um, I find the course very useful. So this is our way of trying to um, um, review courses in the future. That um, the highest rating would would be. Um, I mean, the lowest rating would be further reviewed, and we'll find a way to improve the courses. So this is, this course has high rating, so it's telling me that I'm already enrolled. It's giving me a description of the courses, and since this is um, an STI class, it it has the registration and survey information. So if I'm just interested in taking the online course, I can just click go, and it loads my course. I can resize it based on my screen, or I can do a full screen. So right now it's loading the course. So I already started the course. It's asking me, do I want to um, go back to where I stop or restart the course? So let's say, go back where I stop. So it remembers the page. And if I close this page, it would say it's processing and it would say it's trying to remember where I stop. So that's, that's really very useful for as instructors um, because the fact that you can, if you have 15 minutes of downtime with your students or they're waiting for class to start or there's a hiccup somewhere that you know, requires some downtime, they can get on to the LMS and um, and and work for 15 minutes, and it will save where they are. So that's that's really a, a benefit to using the online training there. Okay, so I went back to the my account page. Then aside from all the courses assigned to my account, there's a way to um, look at my performance. So this would be a, a type of demographic statistics showing how many courses I completed versus uh, the assessment or if there's an overview course that I failed to take. 
Then the calendar feature currently is not being used since it's a calendar available for everybody who tried to turn it on, but it might um, confuse most of the users since it's showing all the district councils. So aside from um, the courses, we have certificates of completion. So we've worked with our intern um, a few months ago and he helped us assign a certificate of completion per course. So let's say if you've completed a course uh, and it has an online version, an online lesson, let's say PNT7503, so it's about the spray system. So I was assigned that um, certificate of completion after completing the course, then it, it would be always part of my, it would be part of my record and I can just click that and print it from home or just have a record of that completion. And this is how we manage most of the FPI uh, courses in Hanover. So there are courses that we stopped um, needing the physical certificate and we just automatically um, assign it to your account after completing the survey and after completing the class. So this would be a sample of the FPI course uh, certificate. Okay, so that's the My Account page. Uh, do you have any questions about this page of the LMS? So either you raise your hand, so I see Bonnie has a question. Bonnie? Hey Bonnie, do you have a question? What about the other district accounts? Do you have any question about um, the home page or the My Account page? So, um, Donna, this is like maybe. Oh, go ahead. Did you this? I didn't even see this. Okay, so we have muted everybody. If you have any questions, Donna, no, no questions. Like lady. Okay, go ahead. Somebody has a question. Is it lady? Make sure you check inside first. Does someone have a question? What's up, Mike? What's up, Mike? I'm good. What's happening? I don't think so, Donna. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so if you don't have any questions about the My Account page, we have new areas in the LMS, so we added news. So if you click that, it's everything that you see under the ticker. So there's a way to archive all the information that we send out to the, the ticker. So it's archived under news. So aside from the news information, we also send out a newsletter. So there's a newsletter archive and it has all the information that's being sent out to all the DOTs, ATRs, GVPs, and all the LMS admins. And if you're not part of this newsletter, um, the IFPI update, uh, click this and enter your mailing address, and you would uh, be part of the mailing list. So these are, sample would be back in um, January. These are the information that was sent out to all the group. So something about the third party courses, COE and information about the classes here and some of the fixes that were done in the LMS or some new courses. So if you're not part of the mailing list, again, we advise everybody to join the mailing list so you get all the information that's being sent out by our communications team. So aside from the news area, Alex, do you want to talk about the health section? Sure. So, um, so we have a help a help section. Um, it's kind of a working document. We've been, you know, adding things to it over the years. Um, frequently asked questions that way. Sometimes you'll be able to um, go to this section and find the answer to your question or problem that you might be having. 
so there's um, all the questions about, you know, using the app, um, how to download it. There's a, there's a um, video that we pointed out earlier on the homepage um, that will talk about how to, how to use the app in terms of the OJL. Um, and then just basic information about how to enroll in OSHA 10, OSHA 30 classes. So these are all frequently asked questions. We've tried to provide links. Um, any hints and tips and tricks for how to answer your question, especially if it's a technical issue. Um, there's a couple of technical things that we've, we've been able to provide, if, you know, if you're having trouble with using, um, you know, maybe you're using a Mac or you're using a um, tablet or something, so you'd be able to go into this frequently asked questions section and, and look up your answer there. Um, there's a couple of videos as well. So, so we can add to this and we could try to continue to add to this so that this becomes a working document for all of our users. Um, and that way uh, you'll have information readily available to you right here you know, on the LMS. Yes, and another thing, um, there's also a search um, field in any part of the LMS website. So you can click that and search, let's say type in password, and it finds you that page where that keyword was used. So how do I reset my password? I'm getting invalid error or I'm getting a blank page. So you can just click that and it gives you that same page. So this is a very helpful area. Let's say right now um, you're over overwhelmed with all the information that you're seeing from the different um, sections of the LMS, all you need to do is, again, find the search field, then just type in your keyword or your question. And then um, Bonnie said, um, um, having problems resetting password two weeks ago, I never got the reset email. Um, so having problems with the headphones, that's why we're having problems communicating. So with the reset password, um, we first we need to verify if it's um, the right uh, email address on the profile. If not, we need to update your IMS information. If it's valid, then the second part is it may be part of your spam. So I would advise you to check your spam folder. If it's not part of your spam folder, and this happened to our mailbox um, um, a few months ago, uh, something in our security setting was blocking the email, and we had to work with our IT guys just to find out or figure out how to enable or allow emails coming from a specific mailbox. So those are the three things that you can look at, but I, I'm going to email you and check with you um, regarding the password issue. Okay, so uh, that was the health area. Then we also have here a link to the IFTI website. So this currently being redesigned. Um, if you are part of the task force um, group, we sent you a link to the revised website. And if you have input on how to improve this, because uh, right now it's mainly static information. So we highly encourage that you send us the feedback so we can revise the main IFTI website. So going back to the LMS, aside from the ipi.edu website we have a course catalog so if you remember the programs of study it was more than 300 pages and let's say you don't have time to read through those pages you just want to find out if a course is available in the lms so let's say can i have all the rigging classes so search field that's the easiest way i just type in a keyword and I click enter or click search and right now it's telling the system can you find me that class so with the result it's showing us that there are 32 courses linked to that keyword and there are 20 online lessons so whenever you see lessons these are online training or registration information attached to the course so if we scroll down um, the first Courses that we see are district council specific. So if you're not from district council three or five, these are not the course that you want to 
uh, view. So you might be looking for something, a generic core, a COR course. So let's say we're scrolling down. So most of these were um, district council specific. So we're seeing there's a bridge rigging course, or is it the Overton course, or is it the instructor course? So we can look at that. Um, the same way that we were viewing course information in the My Account page, now it's um, saying that you're already, um, I'm already enrolled in this course and these are the information. Um, there are several links to videos for classroom training or on-site hands-on training. And there are four lessons that I can review or I can play, if you're an instructor or coordinator, you can, um, just click that and play it for your class. And the good thing about this course, it has several downloadable resources. So if you're an instructor and you need this information, you, or if you don't have Wi-Fi when you teach, um, these are helpful. They might be in a PowerPoint format or a PDF or a handout. So just click that link. And it would download you. The, so I just click a PDF, and from there, so since this is an instructor course, it's giving me uh, the exam key for for cranes. So if you're planning for a class, our advice is to download uh, resources you need, or if you have good Wi-Fi or connection at your training center, or you have a lab, you can just play. Uh, online lessons um, available for this course, and you can pause or stop it as you discuss the class. Yes, Alice. I was just I was just going to add to that, along with the course materials, um, that this is this is where you all come into play. Where we really would like to see our instructors from all of our district councils sharing their best practices. If you have a a great quiz or an activity that you do, um, you know, in the classroom or, or in the lab. Those are the kinds of things that would be really great to share with all your brothers and sisters out there teaching those same courses. So those kinds of things can be emailed to us at the FTI International and we're, you know, we are more than happy to upload those into the system so that uh, everybody can share them. So it's a great opportunity for you to kind of showcase your own work um, and then also to share it with other people that might not have the same, um, same ideas. So just wanted to add that. Okay, thanks Al. So, um, Aside from the courses, um, there's always a question, is there, is there an online lesson within the course? Um, how do I find that out? So th then you start looking at the lesson. So it's saying that these lessons within, let's say, CS201 has uh, some sort of online lesson. So they would say there's, there's something that you can play within that 1126 course code or there's a third party course uh, for 11, uh, I mean 168, there's a basic listing. So several, several uh, results for this uh, keyword. So we can even go back to the, to the sample in the program to study, which was about spray. So it said airless. So I can, if I don't remember the number, I can just type in airless and click on search. And we're looking for the painter course. So again, it's giving a district council specific course code, but I'm looking for the paint course. And if if I remember the numbers, then I don't need to go through the 21 courses or 17 lessons. I remember that it was a 7501. So I just type in that number, then it would give me Aaron Spring. So right now it has a high rating, so that might be a good course to take or to assign to your um, to your apprentices or journey journey person. So it's saying that there's an online lesson. It's showing you some links, um, objectives, uh, their online lessons. So this is part of the updated curriculum that we have. So Paint uh, is updated uh, with the latest version of uh, the SCORM packages in the LMS. So there's also certificate of completion assigned to that once you complete the online lesson.
So that's uh, the fastest way to search for something within the LMS. But if you want, if you have time and you want to browse how the the catalog was set up for your um, trade. Um, so you can go to your assigned. So you might have a different view because right now I have access to all of the catalogs. The way that your permissions are set up or, or requested by your DOT is dependent on your trade. So if you're a um, paint instructor, you might be seeing commercial paint or the industrial paint catalog plus the core curriculum. So if you if you have time to review what's available, you can just go to the catalog per curriculum. So I'm looking at the core curriculum and it's how it's um, grouped. So it, you're looking at the introduction to the union, health and safety, and leadership and development. So again, this mirroring whatever was um, um, found in the programs of study. So let's say I'm looking for introduction uh, to the union courses so uh, i can just click on that catalog and it's showing me that from that catalog i have 44 courses or links that are available and if i'm interested then i can just click the link and it would give me same information as we were viewing course description course materials and possible links uh, about the course So, Al, do you have anything to add about course catalog? Um, no, no, not really. Um, just to try to go in and explore as much as possible because it's, it's it's all there and it'll help you um, when you're searching for things. So, I would I would just go into that catalog and practice searching and using keywords and see what you come up with. Okay. So um, on the next webinar, we'll talk about the last three menu uh, items here. It would be reports, admin menu, and admin tools. And these functions are only assigned to admins. So uh, a user of the LMS would only see the, the first of six items that we just discussed today. So it's mainly user interface. So tomorrow, we'll focus more on the admin functions and what you can do for the, the members, specifically how to enroll to them to online courses. And if you, I think most of the participants are interested in the uploads, uploading completions and uploading the certificates of completion. So I'll open up the floor for questions and I'm gonna unmute everybody. And if you have any questions, again, raise your hand, chat, or unmute your phone. You are unmuted. That's the conversation. I might be popping. Okay. So, any questions from the council? Hey, Alice and Donna. This is Tom. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. So, again, I, I want to uh, thank everyone for getting on, and I know that there's another one tomorrow. But just, you know, I think use this opportunity again. I just can't emphasize that we're, we're kind of we're, we're poised for this, right? So we got shut downs, and the schools are closed, but um, we have an avenue <clears throat> that is in place that that you guys can use and utilize, and um, to continue to deliver the training. So please don't hesitate to get uh, to to look in and come back with some additional questions uh, for tomorrow, because we're doing it back to back. And then uh, if you have other folks that you think that should be on. Uh, make sure they join um, the call as well tomorrow, or the webinar tomorrow as well. That's it. All right, thanks, Tom. Again, last call for questions before we close the webinar. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right, we'll see everybody tomorrow. So today's was kind of a waste of time for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>